There's a battle between Ian Crossland and Milo Yiannopoulos. Play it. Ballot pathways. And while it's thrilling and exciting and can make people sound very interesting, uh, it also gets in the way of um, critical thinking because you're, you, there's, there's a sort of, um, people have done a lot of LSD, they have this infatuation with this way they see the world now, they think they've got this uh, um, insight that nobody else has uh, into the nature of reality, when actually um, they're just confused by a bunch of things being stuck together. That I agree. Along. Have you done LSD? Um, uh, no, mostly not. You uh, should do it before you talk about it. I uh, I don't mean to kill someone. So no murder's wrong. No, um, I, there are things there are things that I'm happy to trust that I shouldn't try. <laughs> that was the full clip that they had. Yeah, Mentone, if you 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 watch the whole thing. Is there anything else that we sh that should be mentioned that was said? Well, <clears throat> it started out with Ian talking about fractals and how there's one you know one major magnetic field in the universe that you can call god and then there's all these smaller gods that are like the individual galaxies and milo was instantly like do you take a lot to lsd mate and, and he was like well i take a little or whatever and then he basically came out and said it sounds like your brain's broken mate and uh and Ian, you know, he took it really well. You know, he could have got he could have gone on the defense a lot more, but he just, you know, asked him like, "Have you ever taken it?" And of course, well, it's hard to be like an ag like be taken seriously when you're like aggro. <laughs> like, it's good that Ian didn't get mad, for sure. Yeah, right. right. But it, it sounded like Tim chimed in and was like, "I agree." Yeah, Tim, I find Tim it interesting that you know, typically it seems that people who are adamantly against psychedelics have never taken them. And also, they also tend to seem to be much more on the rational side of thought, which also creates a little bit more of a boring personality. And you got somebody like Ian, you know, who is much more lovable than either Milo or Tim, you know, and much more charismatic. And so I think, you know, part of what the argument is, is like, it's not all about linear rational thought at all times. You know, that's not the only way to truth. Truth and reality and somebody's experience of existence, you know, is also about enjoyment and creativity. So Milo is kind of trying to compartmentalize people who take psychedelics as being, you know, messed up in the brain and they're, and they're not getting the right neurofire and they're seeing things in, in a twisted way. But, you know, <clears throat> sometimes you have to clear the slate in order to be able to see it clearly. Yeah. And it's also assuming that just because you've taken LSD that like, you're constantly tripping for the rest of your entire life. Like, guess what? You can, you're still capable of like materialistic, rational thought. <laughs> if you've taken LSD before, it doesn't mean like you've taken this thing and suddenly your brain is infected, like permanently with all of the revelations that you had when you're on LSD. So I definitely agree, you know, with Ian saying, you know, have you taken it? Like I was even listening to an interview between, I think it was Dawkins and, Harris and Dawkins, Richard Dawkins was even saying like, you know, I think that I should try it. Um, just because so many people that he respects have come to him and explain the benefits. So yeah, I mean, to, to be critic, it's. And, uh, you've heard Russell, Russell Brand's interview with Eckhart Tolle and, uh, Russell yeah. Brand's obviously taken plenty of psychedelics in his life. And he asked Eckhart Tolle, you know, have you? And he had, and Eckhart Tolle admitted that he had to, he had to try marijuana and he had to try LSD because everybody kept saying to him that it was opening the doors of perception and he had to, you know, to give it a try. And what he said was that it's, it was a fa it was a great experience and the walls were shimmering and, and he was, you know, having these insights, but that his regular state of consciousness is actually more psychedelic because he meditates so much. So, you know, I mean, he, I think that's, well, yeah, that, that's, I mean, I think most people who have a healthy relationship with psychedelics sort of realize that and you, you, you don't want to be relying on it. And I think that realistically, like, you know, Ian's, you know, one of my closest friends and he has a pretty honestly like healthy relationship with psychedelics. Like he probably, I wouldn't think he does it more than once every year or two. So, yeah. Anyway, it's yeah. funny just to see Milo. Like, I hadn't even seen him in an interview in years. Yeah, it's on been a any while. Podcast. Have, no. 
Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, we um the <clears throat> in 2020 during COVID, we brought Milo to Milwaukee, um, and he had a conversation with Destiny, which actually was pretty good. You know, it was um it was it was contentious at some points, but they weren't yelling and shouting. They actually had a really good conversation that's one nice thing about milo in that situation is he can have the conversation without getting upset um even though he may not agree with the other person but yeah i think in this case he's just wrong you know like you're seeing the the research around uh around psychedelics changing and the medical benefits to people with depression and um you know met, uh, mental conditions that western medicine just isn't able to you know without using terrible and addiction. I mean, you're yeah, literally true, you're right? seeing countless cases of exactly. heroin. It's, help, it's helping reconnect a lot of people's neuro pathways, especially yeah. in the microdosing element of it. And I just yeah. wanted to say to add on to it finally is that you know, a health Milo kept talking about like a healthy brain, right? He doesn't think Ian has a healthy brain. But a healthy brain, you have you're talking about the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And in my opinion, a healthy brain has both the left and the right hemisphere active. And th those working together like a feedback loop create a really successful, really positive outlook on life. And so the, the right side of the brain is the one responsible for creative thought and more of that psychedelic thought. And then the left side of the brain is, is the rational thought, you know, and if you're all rational thought and all, like I said, you know, linear logic, you're not going to be able to see the full picture and get the full, you know, essence of life. I think you have to have both hemispheres of the brain working. Therefore, it is necessary sometimes for people to take psychedelics to give that right side of the brain a kick. Maybe it's been. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's 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 not a newsflash. Like it's, it's like lecturing someone about you know a physicist about physics when you've never looked at physics. I'm not saying Ian's like a physicist of <laughs> psychedelics, right. but like <laughs> you you need the experience in order to be able to talk about it. Like you're literally an uninformed participant in, in debate. If you're not so anyway, yeah, I just think it's funny. Milo with his shades, like, oh, like I'll grace them with my presence, but I won't show them my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was on psychedelics and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I mean, only, only yeah. cocaine for me, mate. I mean, he has he obviously has good qualities because he's willing to have hard, hard conversations, but he's obviously a troll. I feel like you never know you know, if he's being completely genuine or not. And, you know, that's part of his whole character and that's what makes him appealing in certain ways. And that's what also makes him completely infuriating. So, yeah, I mean, but Hey, Milo should be Milo. And, you know, this is very in character for Milo. So good for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's obviously very intelligent on a lot of subjects. Yeah. Very well-spoken. Well-spoken. He's informed about quite informed and good, and good for tim for having him on because he is one Seriously. of the guys that is um you know ubiquitously banned by all the big tech media platforms and, absolutely you know having him on just the youtube channel in general could potentially put tim at risk so good you know kudos for him even if you don't agree with anything i listen to it i i think he's going a little hard on uh the conservatives i think tim brought up some good points like that we should you know, the conservative should be looking at the midterms as a victory and he doesn't think so, you know, like, and, um, and I think Milo really wants to see Trump. I, you know, so it'll be, you know, it's interesting, but no, yeah, it's been cool to see Tim, like kind of calling out, uh, the cringe behavior of, of Trump recently for just like, you know, pure, pure warfare tactics um all right cool let's go to the next thing cool so yeah i mean blue check warfare we jack what was the name of the company that eli uh, Lilly. and what eli happened Lilly. so basically there's been this like surge since elon rolled out the pay for the check mark twitter blue feature people are basically impersonating like companies or famous people by creating a username that's like slightly similar. So like you'd think it's them. And since they get the check mark, people don't know if Eli Lilly's handle is. So if it's like Eli Lilly SE or something like people believe it. And basically they 
are doing that. They're getting the check mark, and then they're tweeting out like ridiculous things that you'd never hear <laughs> from those t- <laughs> from those companies. And things have gone are start going viral. Like for this yeah. example, the person tweeted that like insulin was now free, and it went completely viral. And then Eli Lilly had to kind of step up and say, "Hey, this." this is not us. And yeah, it looks like their <laughs> stock, their stock like absolutely cratered. So there's like actually a real world impact there. Mm. Um, so it's just interesting to see that kind of response to Elon's plan there. And he's already since rolled it back. I believe I, I, don't, I read And they that, reintroduced but... the double check marks. Sean, can you go back to Bellagi's tweet? Sure. It's hard to keep well, up. <laughs> yeah. yeah Bellagi's tweet. Cool. Bellagi's tweet is just basically, talking about like what the check marks, you know, should mean and, and, and sort of a lot of the confusion happened because I don't know how if Elon was, you know, thinking through all the different use cases of a of a check mark. Like so Sean, can you I go this, to you know, uh can you go to my page on mines quickly sure. just to show kind of how we handle it? Stewminds.com slash um, Alman. Yeah. So you know, we kind of realized this a while ago. And so we have a specific badge for Minds Plus, which sits next to the Verify badge. And our Verify badge system isn't perfect, but it, it like the definition of Verified on Minds is that, you know, you are who you say you are and you have to prove that you are that person on another network. And you have to share the link with us so that we can make sure that you're that person. So... It's not 100% uh, perfect, but that is the intended scenario. So if you, you, you scroll up to the top, Sean, so you see next to my name, you kind of have both badges. So now go back to Balaji's tweet. So it's like, it's all about definitions. And this is why things have gotten totally wily because I think Elon's original intent was okay, we need to battle spam. So, you know, that means we need more people paying who are verified and then we can just put them, you know, as the, you know, kind of default visible accounts and that'll like bury the spam. That's what my perception of their strategy here was to kind of use payment as a resistance mechanism against bots. And... There is definitely truth to that, but th- their definitions are all messed up and it's kind of caused people to, to troll it in this. I, like, I'm sure I want, I'm going to go search for memes about this after the show, but I would love to see like a full list of the best trolls of this system. Cause I think that there are some really funny corporate trolls where people have gone viral pretending to be different brands. And, I saw one yeah. of uh, Su- Nintendo had you know Super Mario like giving everyone the bird middle finger, yeah, yep. yeah, and uh, and it was uh, obviously uh, King James, you know, LeBron. Oh, um, that one was real good. Guy, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, th- I like when they first rolled this out. I totally understand, you know, outside of the bot perspective, I understand just from a user standpoint. There's a lot of accounts out there that have been on the platform for decade, you know, or, or longer that have been shut, you know, um, shunned from the blue check verification for whatever reason. Um, and this is a way to give power to the people. And I did, I did, I do like the concept. Um, the, the concern I had initially was the accounts that they've banned for years and, and impersonators coming on back onto the, you know, coming on the platform and impersonating those people that have been kicked off for years, it would be really hard for the people that have been kicked off to say, hey, that's not really me. That was my number one concern. But it's interesting seeing how people are still tricking the the community, the Twitter community, <laughs> by impersonating people who are also still on the platform. That's That was, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't see yeah, that. Just, people yeah. were doing this. People, like, even before they rolled out the new Verify logic, they were doing it to Trump. And I would I was seeing, like, almost on a daily basis, a viral... Trump impersonator, you know, saying, Hey guys, I'm back. Yep. And they were doing that before the new verification system was working. So it's like, it's not like this impersonation stuff is new. It's just that the trolls are taking advantage of the fact that a lot of the, a lot of people have not figured out how the verify badge system works yet. So 
they're yeah. getting tricked. Well, Twitter, yeah. you know, in the past has kind of trained everyone like what that check mark you see next to Balaji's name means. And like historically, it's been this like elite thing that, you know, the public figures get. There's not been a lot of transparency behind how you get it. But what it basically has meant was you are who you say you are. Like that is the point of it historically. And, you know, Elon basically used the exact same sign to show, you know, I paid eight dollars. And there's a huge difference between I paid eight dollars and I am who I'm saying I am. So the fact that he used the same icon there was they also was like screwed up our account, which is funny. Uh, yeah, we didn't even at get my to at mines on Twitter. You know, we got verified through the Old actual verification mind. system. Like, you know, I had to go put in different news articles, our Wikipedia, like all of this different kind of proof that we were, you know, a public figure or whatnot. And we got through their actual verification system. And now, in, I, I forget, you know, Sean, I think we got blue well before this whole thing started. But yeah, now you, when you... Yeah. Have, when you click on our verified symbol, it says this account is verified because it subscribed to Twitter blue, which is not what it should say because we had the legacy verification. So there's maybe that's a bug or something, but so that's it so looks like it changed back, but obviously no, on I mobile, think. it says on yeah. look, on, on, so oh, there, it's yeah. just buggy. It's like this on mo buggy. mobile, it shows something different than. On web than the desktop. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's funny. Well, and wow. I think this is they're probably gonna have to roll these back regardless now that they've you know now that they've well, uh, paused it, right? Yeah, those little tool tips like explain the problem too. It's like they're you have to click the tool tip to understand if they paid or if they're a public figure. Like that's not the right. same thing. So it it oh, shouldn't be use using the badges. Same badge. I know, and then they tried doing the official badge, but that wasn't even showing up next to the user for everybody. Like, like for they, they, yeah, they seem to arbitrarily be adding the double check mark, and like, it's funny. I mean, at the end, of, can you go to Elon's uh, tweets because yeah. it's just funny how he's been playing this, and it's just the Streisand effect in action because Twitter traffic is at an all-time high you know, massive backlash. Everyone is absolutely slamming them, but it's sort of like laughing, you know, at the media because I mean, they're like, it's just driving them traffic. So. Well, I said this earlier, yeah. but the fact that it's the same traffic that he was claiming was fake when he was trying to get out of his acquisition. Is yeah. also pretty funny. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, well, the, I'm the sure DA, the DAU is all spam until he owned the company. Now it's uh, the highest day he's ever had. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds it's like it's it's like a politician, you know, getting into office and then owning the the economic numbers. Yeah, that, exactly. Like, that they didn't. Yeah, but he's now that he's in the den, you know, he's probably realizing how difficult spam detection is. Mm -hmm. and, and he must have realized that during the lawsuit or during the attempt of getting out of his acquisition because he i still don't fully understand what happened there where he like well went out and then just 180 and bought it i think like, it's why? because the contract law if you listen to the all-in podcast with uh you know cal canis and david Sachs and those guys who are literally r like running twitter now uh who are close friends with elon they said, I mean, they were involved with the deal. Calacanis texts with Elon were leaked all over the place and they're really funny to read. But what they said was that contract law is why mm -hmm. it went through. Like he, he wanted out, but mm. you well, know, Twitter. I mean, that's probably yeah. the right way it should work. He, he signed it. And yeah. He signed away his due diligence. He signed the deal. Like he can't just back out of that stuff and now but, we have the head of you know yol the head of yep. trust and safety just resigned yep. which you know i think one of their top security guys left security not yeah security women jack how dare you 
Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, their CISO, Chief of Information. I say guys in the general. I need to stop doing yeah, that. Yeah, man, that's, 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 so that's, 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 that's embedded patriarchy, bro. Yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> toxic masculinity. <laughs> so toxic. But, I'm sorry, everyone. I mean, I think that, yeah, look, if their traffic's on all, like, they're going to figure out these issues and... It's just crazy that in their all hands meeting, he was saying that they're like facing bankruptcy. Yeah. I was going to ask you on that. Yeah. Like, when they think ended that? remote work. Yeah. I made, I made a, a comment in the Minds team chat room. I was like, everybody is required to come work in my living room. <laughs> you know, sure. well, we'll be, we'll, we'll be yeah. much more. If, I don't, dude, I just like maybe with a company that big you feel like you have more control over what's going on when people are actually in the office and we have thousands of employees. It's probably really hard to keep track of remote work, but yep. I just don't, I am surprised that he's taking that old school attitude. Yeah. That's I was going to ask, ask you about that. Yeah. Cause like you, an argument could be made and I can be, you know, swayed either way on this one. Like I think the remote work is such a new concept since the pandemic. Like, it always existed, right? But it, not not to this degree. And you know, some companies are sticking with it. Some companies are going back to bringing people in, back into the office. It's yeah, it's a tough one. Like it's with with uh, bringing people back in the office. Now you have the brick and mortar costs. You have all the costs associated to you know having them there. And um, but you know, people are there. And I, I you can make an argument that there's a little more synergy and teamwork because people are in the same space. And if you're working on something, it's easier. It is, yeah. It's both. You know, both are true. I think. I, yeah. I think that you need to you need to have a kind of reasonable balance. But re remote first companies absolutely can work and absolutely yeah. kill it. The thing is, though, that if you're Twitter and you're looking at your real estate costs in your rent, or I don't know if they own buildings or if they're renting, but like from his perspective, he's like, you know what? We're spending millions of dollars on office space and like no one's here, yeah. you know? So, and, and the op the, the idea of, of getting rid of the main office completely. I mean, honestly, I would probably have gone more in that direction, but you know, it's totally reasonable if you have that infrastructure to use it because yeah. it's a waste of money otherwise. Well, and, and we saw the experience with the food and the wine on tap and the, you know, coffee and, you know. Yeah, that funny I mean, video of the girl just like prancing uh, around the HQ. I mean, that's a ton yeah, of. Played that one after you left yesterday. <laughs> oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just a huge yeah. expense. And it's like, why? You know, I, I'm with him, like having people work in person and stuff, but that's an easy cut to start cutting some of that stuff like that. You know, also like, start to limit yeah. the uh, you, you drastically limit the talent pool when you force physical because people have yeah. to move if, if they want to work there. Like, for it's sure, a big, that's a huge thing. Like, at least for us, like, I mean, I'm surprised that he want like because, yeah, you can just accomplish so much remotely and there have been some big companies that have completely switched but you know i don't think that we know better than elon about you know no there's benefits to both for sure yeah. i think it's unclear which one is better but there's certainly I'm just surprised. Like value I'm... to being in the same spot yeah there's there's un undoubted value and i guess i just can't believe how he's juggling everything right now i would go it's just how he yeah, keeps just, his sanity just with twitter alone then he's got dude SpaceX, i get anxiety Tesla. thinking about how he cuz i'm so overwhelmed with so much work and juggling just all the products and features that we're managing in one company but thinking about doing that across multiple companies and like yeah. multiple countries it, what yeah it's yeah i hope that you know i hope that he stays mentally okay i mean it's yeah. not it's very very difficult i'm still like I, i'm still on the side of letting people pay for the the verified check i think it's a good idea it's a smart move i'm sure twitter's brought in more money just from their community than they have in a long time just with that one little switch but it's um, not the thing is that it's that's not what it is it's a different like, check 
It's not paying for yeah. verification. You don't, you can't pay for verification. You can pay to prove that you paid, but all that you paying, have to define verification. You can't yeah, just say you, verification. Right. That's part of the problem. Yeah. That, yeah, that is exactly the problem. So I agree with you. The direction that he's going with memberships, that's how you create a uh, sustainable business. Like that's why Minds Plus has been so much of our core focus. That's what companies need. You don't want to be relying on surveillance advertising. Right. By the way, not hearing a peep from him about changing the surveillance advertising on Twitter, which you know, he probably realizes they're completely addicted to and cannot change. But yeah, I mean, th th there needs to be a new bad multiple badge logic and it needs to look good and be nicely designed. And it needs to, th the badges need to exist next to each other. Or maybe it's just like the same badge, but it's many different versions right. of the same badge, which, you know, have with different colors or different outlines and, you know, it's not like people haven't thought about this before. Yeah. Like, so yeah, and that's, what, that's what Facebook and YouTube did for a while is they were giving gray checks to people. As long as, you know, your information was in there and they verified, you know, your personal information, you would get a gray check. Um, yeah. I'm, that's what and I mean. Is, I, I, and one of the yeah. things that they're going to get into now, and now that they're trying to become a financial services company, they're doing all the applications to, to do that because he wants everybody's money in there so that he can, you know, pay yields and whatnot, but they're going to start doing deep KYC, know your customer and uploading, you know, identity documents. And it's going to become a monster surveillance machine. I'm not saying that there is no place for actual identity verification, but like that is going deeper into the Skynet direction. And just to give, the contrast of like how we're handling uniqueness and identity in like humanness on minds is like, we're about to roll out this whole thing that where you have to write down a phone, a, a, a string of numbers and take a photo of with your, with your phone. And it uses like this accelerometer on your device. And it can basically verify that you are unique. You are a human to, you know, unique to this device, but it's anonymous. So it's not like, it's totally privacy protecting. It's a way to understand this is a unique human, but it's not requiring all of the sensitive information. And so, you know, those are the different types of options that you deal with. And it's just, um, yeah, I don't, I think the privacy stuff is really, you know, I just ho hope that people hold, we, hold him to we the need fire. To start pestering. Yeah, we need to. Sorry, well, no. yeah, I have been a little bit. Um, and we should make one of those memes, you know, like the Drake meme where he's like shaking it off and then he's like happy. You know yeah, what I'm right. About? Like, yeah, certain levels. Do the of... one where he's shaking off like the he's shaking off open source encryption privacy. He doesn't care. And then he's just like, what does he care about? Like eight dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but no, it's he should care about eight dollars. Eight dollars is absolutely critical to the business being functioning but you know he was the one talking about making twitter dms encrypted he was the one talking about open source algorithms he was the one talking about free speech and again it's still early i'm yep. a fan of elon i'm not trying to be you know in the in the hater camp but he absolutely has to come through on at least some of this you know i'm you know he even said like the number of people asking him to unban Trump is like, you know, the company would be rich if he had a dollar every time, but it's like, that needs to happen. I would, if that doesn't happen within the next month, something is weird. Yeah. Do you think, do you think the unbanning could be the next, because, you know, obviously he's been talking about unbanning accounts that hasn't happened yet. Um, could that be the next step in this, you know, to get people's confidence back yeah, that would be a huge confidence booster. But also, it's going to scare away a ton of advertisers, which he's he knows will happen. So, yeah. I obviously support unbanning Trump and unbanning everybody. But you know, a couple. How long has it been since he took over? What two weeks now? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So he said his statement was that you know we're not doing any 
uh, reinstatements until the content yeah. moderation council meets or whatnot. And he said like, at least for a couple weeks, we're not going to have any update on it. Yeah. So it after with that, he said, uh, yeah, after the midterm. So, you know, we're getting there within he need some, there needs to be a huge update in the next couple of weeks or something is, something's weird. Yeah. I would say. Agreed. So let them all back on. Just, just let everyone, rip off yeah. the mandate. Yeah, just let them back on. I mean, you know, there's, <laughs> I don't, I don't see how it hurts. I mean, well, here's yeah. the other thing that I was yeah. th thinking about yesterday. Like people have been speculating, oh, you know, my reach is back, but he hasn't made any statements on shadow banning on what, like, what have they reversed any shadow banning? Have they removed like because there I saw something going viral that like oh Twitter in Japan is now suddenly showing up as mostly like comedy and stuff as opposed to politics. So all the Twitter Japan people were like, "What happened? Like suddenly we're not seeing politics anymore." So did they change something having to do with the ranking system in Japan? Like. Hmm. They know people who work at Twitter now know what is Elon knows what's happening with the algorithms and the shadow banning. I'm sure he looked into it, even for the sake of his own account. So, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we just need more info on it. That would be a great statement for morale of the whole exactly. network. Like, guys, I just looked into the shadow banning. This is what's been going on. It's off. And yep. that'd be huge. So we yeah, shall see. Um, all right. You see our uh, follow us all on Minds. Anything else, Nikos? No. Just have a good weekend for my end. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>